Hi everyone, my name is Colleen McGilvery and I'm from the KU Natural History Museum. Today, Kestrel and I are going to share with you how to build a tool that can be used to study microbes. Now, microbes are small, tiny organisms or small, tiny particles that can't be seen with the naked eye. So how do we know that they're there? Well, scientists can use many different tools to study microbes. Can you think of tools that a scientist might use to study a microbe? Some tools that scientists use to study microbes include microscopes. These microscopes can magnify a microbe. So they take something that's very small, like a microbe, and they make it appear much bigger than it actually is. Another tool that scientists can use to study microbes are Winogradsky columns. A Winogradsky column is a mixture of mud, soil, and water. This mixture creates a mini microbial garden. This garden is a community of microbes and different microbes grow in different layers. Over time, the columns will show different colors in the layers of the muddy mixture caused by different microbes that grow there, depending on the nutrients and other resources available. Some microbes are heterotrophs. Heterotrophs are microbes that cannot make their own food or energy. Other microbes are autotrophs. Autotrophs can make their own food or energy. When heterotrophs and autotrophs use resources like carbon and sunlight to make energy, whether they are making it themselves or using resources from their environment, chemical reactions occur. These chemical reactions allow us to visualize or see the microbes and the work that they're doing. A Winogradsky column is just one tool that we can use to see these chemical reactions and to better understand the microbes in the environment. I'm going to demonstrate how to build a Winogradsky column. Follow along to build a Winogradsky column of your own. Just remember, when you follow the instructions, you wanna make sure that you practice safety. For example, when you find a site to collect from for your Winogradsky column, make sure that it's safe to do so. Let's get started. Now these columns are made up of a mixture of soil, mud, and water, and a carbon source. In this case, when we make a Winogradsky column, we use newspaper because newspaper provides carbon that heterotrophic organisms can take from. And we also provide sunlight by putting these columns in a sunny window or outside, so that way that sunlight is provided to those heterotrophic organisms as well. Now, when you make these columns, they have to sit for a few weeks because when you first mix it all together, it's just gonna look like layers of mud and water. But over time, as these organisms grow and increase in numbers, you'll be able to visually see their respiration by seeing those gradual color changes over time. And each organism will create its own unique color and it will create very distinct, unique layers in the soil and the mud in the column. But again, it takes a long time because you need a lot of organisms to create a lot of respiration to cause those color changes. This is a diagram of a Winogradsky column showing the layers of water and mud and the color layers that form. 
At the very top, a green layer will form from photoautotrophs using sunlight and carbon dioxide from air and water. The white layer below are chemoautotrophs using carbon dioxide from air. The orange layer in the mud are photoheterotrophs using sunlight and carbon dioxide from the dirt and the air around them. The purple layer is photoautotrophs using sunlight and carbon dioxide that is made in the layers below them but don't need oxygen. The green layer in the mud are photoautotrophs that use sunlight and carbon dioxide. And the black layer at the very bottom are bacteria and archaeans that are chemoheterotrophs that use the carbon source from the very bottom. So to see that respiration, you will see color changes in the layers, you will see distinct layers, and you will see condensation at the top of the column.